Hey everybody, it's Muscle Car Campy one more time going back into the Ford world today. 1966 GTA Fairlane, 390 cubic inches of FE power, 335 horsepower, and best of all, it's got the select shift transmission shifter. Put it in D for drive, put it in one or two and treat it like a manual. At least that's what the ad said. We're gonna take a good look at this car today. I think it's one of the best looking cars of the 60s. Stay tuned. 1962, the Ford Fairlane arrived as the first intermediate sized car in the industry. Bigger than a Falcon, smaller than a Galaxy, this car was hugely important to Ford. So important, in fact, that they developed a small block engine just to power this car. They didn't have anything small enough or light enough to put in the intermediate in 62, so they developed the entire small block Ford engine line. Pontiac took the whole industry by storm in 64, putting the 389 in the GTO and creating the first intermediate muscle car. Ford wasn't that far behind though. 1966, they dropped the 390 in the Fairlane and using the nomenclature from the Ford GT and the Mustang GT, called it the Fairlane GT. And if you got it with the automatic, it was the GTA. You know, when Ford introduced the uh, GT on the Fairlane, it wasn't just a power plant option. You know, there was a lot of cool stuff. You got the, the chrome breather, the chrome rocker covers, uh, chrome oil breathers. It was a real part of the package, and they used that heavily in the advertising. In fact, one of my favorite ads is, you know, they were kind of getting a tiger by the tail. Obviously, a swipe at the Pontiac GTO. They had a Fairlane with the hood closed with a tiger tail coming out of the grill. So they knew what they were doing. They knew they had to get in here and really do some uh, heavy duty marketing to make this car work. So among the changes to this car, this is a pretty stock automobile other than it uses an Edelbrock aluminum intake, which took about 30 pounds off the nose of the car, an aluminum Edelbrock water pump, and the owner Tim Vorick has changed to a double master cylinder and front disc brakes big safety upgrade on these cars. It also has MSD ignition wires and an aftermarket coil. So car runs nice, looks great, and it's not really too far from stock. You know, the Fairlane was really all new for 1966. The body was completely redesigned. It really did mimic the full-size Fords of that era. Gorgeous body, tail lights were similar, except skinnier, stacked headlights. I love stacked headlights, we all know that, right? but the body design was new. The wheelbase was 116 inches now. This car to 390 fits in. You look under the hood, there's lots of room under there for a 427 even, which became a limited production option. You know, the designers didn't miss a single trick on this car. They didn't just put a flat fender here. It's a peaked fender. Look the way the car blends right into the roof line. You've got a beautiful line coming out of the back goes down here and then it comes flat to the front of the car. And just a gorgeous design. And even the interior of the car, which we'll get to in a minute, was styled. Everything in there is fancy. There's nothing plain about this car. Really cool part of this car is, like I said, the styling didn't end at the front of the car or the profile. Everything was styled and designed to a T. Even on the taillight housings, it kind of comes out here in the front. It's not a flat surface. Today's cars, everything's a flat surface, or it's melted down looking. This was style for the sake of style. You had the beautiful GTA emblem on the trunk, this beauty panel with the Fairlane logo in it. I mean, all the way across, the bumpers came out at the corners to match the taillight design. You got your dual exhausts. I really dig the styling on these 66, 67 Fairlanes. What I like about this car, of course, the steering wheel, the wood steering wheel with the th four holes in each spoke just screams 1960s. This car does have the um, bucket seat interior, which was standard on the GT. Really are comfortable. I don't know if I would want to take it on a road course, but honestly, the seats are very comfy. I love the console. Tim added a little consolette here with cup holders and place to put your stuff. He added some uh, auto meter gauges under the dash and one on the steering column. All right, we're with Tim Vorick, the owner of the 66 Fairlane. Uh, he's using the uh, selection. 
shift gearbox too. I like that. Shifting it like a manual, just like the ad says. How long have you had the car now, Tim? Since 2005. 2005. It's a beauty. I mean, you really, the amber glow paint is gorgeous on this thing. Thank you. How long did it take you to restore the car? Initially five years because we went completely through the car. I mean, we took the firewall insulation out of it. Seats are already done. The trim, the steering wheel, pull the motor out, transmission out, the rear axles. We did the brakes, upper and lower ball joints. Um, anything that had normal wear on it wasn't up to spec was replaced. Wow. The motor was uh, board 30 over. It was um, balanced. We uh, put steel seats in the cylinder heads so we could utilize unleaded fuel. Rebuilt the carburetor. Um, the cylinder heads put bronze valve guide down. Just anything that needed to be done to the car was done and done right. So it's good for another 60 years, basically. I hope so, yes. And, uh, I don't know if I'm good for another 60 <laughs> me years. Me either. <laughs> but but the, uh, all the machine work on a block was done with torque plates. Okay. And um, one thing I'd like to share with anybody that's interested in an FE Ford, there's two books that you need to buy, and that's the FE Ford Building an Engine by Barry Robotnik or the Great Intake Manifold Comparel by Jay Brown. Those contain a valuable amount of information for anybody that's seriously looking at one of these engines. Yeah, and there's not a lot of, um, you know, the FE is, you know, it's been out of production for a long time. Since it's 76. Yeah. So, but they sure did make a lot of them. And nothing, they were all about torque. Boy, these things make great torque. And of course, how many engines can say they've won, you know, drag races, they've won the 24 hours of Le Mans. You know, really a special, special engine. Yeah, it's amazing that uh, what they did with Le Mans, I mean, they basically took a truck motor and beat the best in the world. Yep. Yeah, and that, that must have made Enzo's head spin too, you know, oh boy. Have you always been a Ford guy? Do you consider yourself a dyed in the wool Ford guy? Yes, I have. I've uh, had some uh, accolades of Ford, uh, master sales counselor at the dealership. I started out as a tech. I also received a uh, Society of Professional Sales Managers Award for Ford, and at one time was part owner of a small Ford dealership. Okay. So I went from the tech, to parts, to service, to sales, sales manager, and general manager. I always had a little, I guess, blue blood in my veins. <laughs> did you build the engine in this 390 yourself? Yes, yes, did everything. Wow. I, mean, the, I had my work, I was very fortunate to have a man that knew these engines do my machine work. And uh, when I got it back from him, I bolted on the cylinder heads, turned the motor upside down, and went through the cylinder bores, the dial gauge, and the main bores, and they were all right on the money. Nice. Yep. Wow. And, uh, we did a mock-up assembly, then tore it down. TRP rod bolts, uh, forged TRW pistons, Lenati ground me a factory camshaft for it. It's a flat tappet. Did you have any, at the time, any desire, maybe a little gnawing at you to put a set of those like aluminum cylinder heads on at the Edelbrock aluminum heads? I did. Heads. I mean, that's a, a lot of extra power for one of these, but I do love the fact that except for the, really from a performance standpoint, except for the intake manifold, you really did leave it as a uh, God and Henry Ford intended it. Yeah, I wanted to stay close to that. And the cylinder heads on these were not that bad. The big limiting factor was probably the exhaust manifolds and the um, <clears throat> intake manifold. And like I say, that book by Jay Brown will show you the difference of the service package intake manifold versus the stock. Yeah, it's a, uh, boy, it just drives perfectly, this car. It feels like a brand new car. And you drive this car a lot, yes. too. I've, I've seen you at about 15, 20 different car shows over the years. Um, you're not afraid to put some mileage on this thing. Well, you're not saving it for the next guy? No. My Rubba and my grandchildren are going to be fighting over this one. Nothing wrong with that. I love the hood on this car, too. I love the way those 390 uh, plates look on the hood. Just a very, very cool car. What's your favorite part of this car? I guess just driving it, the only thing I could probably wish that was a four-speed. Uh, I did some drag racing in my 
past, uh, bought one of the Ford of Canada drag race winning cars and ran that for a while. I just kind of missed uh, shifting with a four speed, but this is the next best thing. Yeah. How does this shifter work? Does it work well? Do you ever miss any gears with it? Or? <laughs> if you miss yeah. any gears with this, you got to be pretty bad. <laughs> you start low, just push it to second, notch it up to drive. And, but, uh, I like the way they did everything on here. The console is beveled towards the driver. They really did a nice job on these cars. They did. It was just uh, during the time of the Fairlane, you have to understand, it was the redheaded stepchild of Ford because they were selling every Mustang they could make. So Ford was converting some plants that were producing Fairlanes to Mustangs, and most of them were production went to Mustangs because I remember selling them back in the day. We were begging for Mustangs and we could sell every one, you know, that we got our hands on. Fairlanes were not quite that way. Um, so that was kind of a little bit of a letdown and I think Ford probably didn't put the emphasis on this car that they should have. Sure. It was an important car for Ford, yes, surely in the overall scheme. You know, like I said, it was first to market ahead of the GM cars and it really was an important car for the Ford Motor Company, but um, I just love the way, like I said, I love the way it looks, and of course the big Fords were such a great value, you know, my dad bought a 67 Galaxy new, two-door hardtop, and it was big enough for a family of six. I mean, you didn't need a station wagon, you could right. literally pile my mother, my father, and four boys in this car, and there was plenty of room for everybody. So I could see the midsize being a little harder sell because for a few hundred dollars more, you could get a full size. But you know, not everybody wants a full size car. This is a pretty large car by today's standards. Oh, definitely. But back then, it was just considered a midsize. Yeah. But I think this is pretty much just right. The hood is just long enough. The trunk, you could you could put a family of six in the trunk. I mean, there's no problem back there. I just think it's a um, really a cool car. have to restore the interior as yes. well yeah. and that had it was it hard to get parts in this color yes it was very difficult the um, I found a guy in the state of Washington to make up the door panels and I got the seat trim uh, from a guy that's unfortunately no longer in business he's I think he sold out to Eckler's or somebody like that mm -hmm. and then we put all new foam in it new foam in the seats um, the um, like I said, firewall, new carpeting. This is all repainted. These were sent out again to... Uh, Did you have to redo these? Oh, yeah. They were sent out to a guy in British Columbia, Vancouver, Canada. Wow. This and that. And he did an amazing job. All this was bad. I mean, yeah. look at it. It's perfect. I'm looking... I'm pretty jealous, I gotta say. You know, yeah. Well, yeah, this guy was really... He was really super good. Muscle Car Campy saying that's a wrap. Don't forget, hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, make sure you get notified every time a new video goes live. We've got all kinds of great stuff coming up. You won't want to miss it.